Talk about iconic! An M4 replica this week for those budding Rambos out there. And it isn't going to break the bank either. It is the JG Huntex M4A. And welcome to AAR On Air. This week it's one for the military lovers out there who maybe find themselves on a lower budget. This one definitely slots into the fun category and is going to bring out the weekend warriors amongst us. Firstly, let's start with the cost because this one isn't going to break the bank. It's going to set you back around £185 UK. Now, Let's take a closer look at what you get for your hard-earned readies. To start with, you're getting yourself a piece of history. The M4 really is iconic. It is a relatively newcomer to the historic market, as it saw its first real service by US troops around the turn of the century in Kosovo. It was produced after troops complained about the M16 being too long and unwieldy in close quarters combat. The M4 was quite a while in design stage though, which started actually in the late 80s. Around half a million have been produced and interestingly enough, they fire 5.56mm or .223 rounds. So nothing particularly big and hard hitting. Again, highlighting its close quarters use. The effective range was around a maximum of 500 yards. Mm. But with a short barrel, the accuracy would be nothing to write home about if you felt the need to try to shoot out at that range. I suppose you could say that the M4 was never perfect, because in its short lifespan has been subject to around 90 changes and modifications. After saying that, a lot of those changes were to modify the gun to include such things as grenade launchers, etc. As imperfect as it may have been, it is still very much a classic. So what about this 12 gram CO2 powered BB firing black blaster from JG? <sighs> Let's take a closer look, shall we? It is naturally all black. It tops the scales at around 2.3 kilograms, which is a little over five pounds in old money. Add the 12 gram CO2 and 18 round capacity of BBs and you'll nudge that weight up a smidge. The overall length is very close to the original weapon at 30 inches long with the stock closed. Now then, open it up and it's 33 and a half inches long when it's fully open. This is somewhere around the 760 and 850 millimeters in decimalization speak. Surprisingly, a lot of this is made from metal, but it does have a few non-metal components mixed in as well. From the front, there is the protruding barrel with muzzle brake on the end. Moving back, we come to the raised foresight, which is fixed, mimicking the original with its high position. Behind this is the handguard, which is polymer and covers the metal barrel. Unlike the original, this isn't likely to be needed to prevent your hands being burnt from the hot barrel. After saying that, this is quite addictive and will likely result in you firing quite a few rounds through this fun packed shorty. Moving back further still, we come to the main receiver, which is full metal and houses lots of features again to mimic the original. The top rail is Weaver and is fitted as standard with a carry handle which also has the rear sights. These are adjustable for both windage and elevation and has two flip up aperture settings, neither of which will probably be any good to these old eyes. But we'll try later on. Below this is the safety selector switch showing safe semi and fully automatic. Naturally here in the UK the fully automatic isn't an option 
sadly. But I will be giving the old trigger finger a workout to see how fast I can get this to fire. On the right hand side is the drop open chamber door that is activated as soon as you cock the gun. The trigger is a little stiff but completely acceptable for this type of gun. Of course there is the AR style grip below. The magazine is all metal and is removed via the drop out button on the right hand side. At first it isn't particularly clear as to how you load this but it is simply a case of pressing the button on the right hand side of the magazine and removing the outer metal casing. Press steel I suppose. This reveals the more familiar inner which has hex key on the bottom which requires unscrewing to then insert your 12 gram CO2, retighten to break the seal and then you're ready to load up with your 18 rounds of preferred BBs. This is done by pulling down on the spring with the aid of the raised lug or fingernail breaker. Mm. At, the <laughs> at the bottom you can lock it into place and then you load your rounds into the top through the hole at the top. Bit fiddly but there you go. Once you've got all rounds in release the spring then return this making sure you get it the right way around into the casing back into the gun and you're ready to go. All you need to do now is adjust that rear stop to your preferred position and now we're definitely ready to go. Firstly let's get this over the chronograph to see just how close we can get to the claimed FPS figure using standard steel BBs. The first thing to say is this was tested outside over the chronograph and the temperature was oh, 2 degrees centigrade. Not the environment ideally suited to getting the best from a CO2 gun. Nonetheless it saw a consistent 414 feet per second using the standard 5.37 grain BBs which is around 2.04 foot pounds or 2.77 joules. In these conditions I think that's pretty good. That done, time to get this out on the 10 meter range. Now I tried, I did try, but Storm Barra was hitting at the time of the target filming and it was pretty impossible and it would be unfair on the gun. So time to go indoors. I say indoors, the only place I had available was the extension on the house which is currently under construction. And so it's only 8 metres this time, but here goes. Now I don't think that's bad for a CO2 BB fun gun and don't forget those sights are adjustable. I was also testing the Baba Yaga <laughs> on the same day and I so wanted to do something with the targets in the paddock to make this more entertaining but sadly it wasn't going to happen with the storm hitting. Hopefully I'll get hold of these again another time and maybe Mrs AAR can get involved as well these will be so much fun together. Well I can definitely see this will appeal to quite a few people out there not only for its historic value or even its military feel for the weekend warriors but for the fun factor and all at a budget price. This is really good fun and will bring a smile to anyone's face it isn't a target gun and it isn't a pest control weapon either. It's fun, pure fun.
Even though I didn't get to do what I wanted to do in the target section, you can still probably tell I really enjoyed this one, and hopefully you have too. If so, please give us the old thumbs up, subscribe, share, hit the old alarm bell to be notified when the next programme comes out. The merch is available, as always, from the website. And, of course, there are the forums and chat rooms and everything to keep you busy on these cold winter nights. A big thank you, as always, to the guys at Vector Air, as usual, for getting hold of this one for me to use and probably for holding this one back, because apparently they seem to be disappearing at a rate of knots. Above all, thank you guys for watching. It just leaves me to say, stay safe, shoot safe, probably stay warm as well, and hopefully I'll see you next week. Bye for now.